Hi, this is Rachel with Good Behavior Beginnings, and today's video is on homeschool discipline. So when we start talking about challenging behavior and how do we discipline our kids, I want to first focus on that the biggest question is why is there challenging behavior? We want to first determine what is the function or the reason for our learner acting out. Um, you know, despite how it might feel, our learners are not just acting out to be brats <laughs> or to try to upset us. There is some need that they have that they need met and they don't have a good way of meeting that need in that moment. So the very first thing is trying to figure out what is going on with my child. Now, as your learner is older, you may expect that they can tell you what's wrong or what they need. And that may not always be the case. With young learners like toddlers and preschoolers, we know that they don't always have the language to recognize when they're getting hungry, when they're tired, when they don't feel well. And so we often look for those causes or those functions for their behavior before we determine that it's something else. When my kid throws a fit, I think, okay, when was the last time they ate? Did they sleep well last night? Um, you know, is there something else going on in their life right now that could be throwing things off? So we do that a lot of times with younger learners, but we sometimes forget that that also applies to older learners who may have the communication skills to tell us, but may not have the self-reflection to recognize. And honestly, there are adults that don't recognize that they act different when they are hungry or tired or not feeling well. So that's the first thing. Let's, let's see what's going on. Is there anything in the environment that is setting this person up for a rough time right now? Besides that, then there are some common reasons that an individual might engage in inappropriate behavior. They might be trying to get somebody's attention or reaction, and they might just not have a better way. This is often the case when our kids are trying to play with us, asking us to play. We're busy, we're busy, we've got all these chores. And so then they go and they do something that they know is going to get our attention. And then we have to sit there and we got to talk to them about why that they did something that they weren't supposed to do, or we have to go and we have to handle the situation. You know what? They got our attention, right? It wasn't necessarily good attention. It wasn't in the way that they wanted it initially or that we would like to give the attention, but they got our attention. So that would be one reason that a learner might engage in problem behavior is to get attention that they're not getting in some other way. Another reason might be to get access to something. Um, I think that this is sometimes uh, combined with some of the other uh, reasons, but you know, if my learner wants to play with their toys and they um, are told to go to their room and clean up, but instead they just keep playing with their toys. Part of that is because they enjoy those toys, right? Um, they might engage in prom behavior so that they can be sent to their room so that then they can play with whatever toys are in there. I don't think that that is as much a case as I think often in homeschool, we may be encountering the escape or avoidance. They don't want to do something. So that's a third reason that a learner might be engaging in problem behavior. Um, it might be that they just don't want to do that task. Um, they may not like it. It may be difficult for them. Um, and, they, and they just don't want to do it at this moment. We've all been there. There are things we don't want to do, and we engage in other behaviors to avoid having to do those tasks. So I think those are probably going to be the most common reasons that you might be experiencing challenging behavior in your homeschool setting. 
That being said, there are other functions to behavior. There are other reasons that learners might engage in challenging behavior. So, you know, look into and try and figure out what it is that your learner is trying to get in that situation or get out of in that situation. Um, so once we know what our learner is trying to get or get out of in a particular situation, we want to have a plan for how we can reduce that problem behavior occurring in the future. And we'll talk about what do we do in the moment, but let's plan for how are we going to make this better in the future, because that's going to make our lives easier. So if I know, for example, that my kid wants my attention, so sometimes things are about getting attention, and I know that my learner finds um, writing tasks more challenging, uh, less preferred, then I want to put a plan in place around those things, knowing what my learner normally is getting from this challenging behavior. I want to set them up for success. So step one is setting them up for success. Make sure that the work is on their level. Make sure that you have the supports necessary to help them succeed. Our goal in educating is not to challenge somebody so much that they're going to get it wrong every time because then they're not learning. We want to challenge them and provide the supports necessary for them to learn to be successful with that challenge. So that might mean that you... Um, give a little bit more support, a little bit more explanation, um, that you do things at a slightly slower pace for learners where a task is really challenging. You also want to make sure that you have some basics of the environment set up that are just going to make homeschool in general more pleasant. Do you have a schedule or plan or some sort of a routine? Even if you have to change it on a dry erase board frequently, you know, do they have some idea as to what is expected of them and what's coming next? Um, also, are you providing a, a positive environment? Are there positive things, things they like to do, things they enjoy? Is your interaction with them enjoyable most of the time so that they are engaged in the activity. You also want to limit distractions. If things are too noisy and too much chaos going on, how can we limit that so that our learner actually can focus and is more likely to be successful? So whatever our learner needs, can we set them up for success? You know, they've had a snack beforehand. They have a comfy chair to sit in. We've just done a really fun activity and we've got another one planned after this activity. How can we make this um, the most positive environment for our learner to be successful? The second step is that we want to teach the appropriate behaviors to handle these situations. Um, teaching um, is not just telling. We don't want to just tell them don't say that or you should do it this way. We want to actually teach and support and practice and make sure that they really can demonstrate those skills. My learner gets frustrated and when they get frustrated, um, there's usually screaming or slamming things or rude comments. Like that's what it looks like for us. So one of the things that we've been working on is trying to take a deep breath and calm down, trying to say things in a nicer way, trying to keep a calm body, even if we're frustrated. And if necessary, to ask for a break. I can't right now. I need a break. Please, can I have a break? And so instead of just telling my kid over and over again that they need to calm down or they need to ask for a break or something like that, we actually want to practice it. So we do sort of role plays. We're like, okay, pretend that I'm giving you something that's super frustrating and you really don't want to do it. What could you do, right? And it's outside of the problem situation. So the learner is in a good mindset to be able to problem solve and to remember those strategies. Whereas in the moment, they're less likely if they haven't practiced that a lot. So teach 
the appropriate behaviors, practice those behaviors outside of the context of that challenging situation. And then the third step I'm going to call reset and redirect. Okay. Um, it's going to look different depending upon what the reason is that your learner is acting out. So I will give you some examples. But basically, what we want to do is reset our own selves and to be able to analyze the situation from an objective perspective in the moment without getting caught up in the emotions ourselves, or it's just going to escalate. So we have to reset, look at it, figure out what's going on, and then we need to help redirect our learner to what is appropriate in that moment. Now, from a behavior analytic perspective, which is my professional background, we say extinction. We don't give in to the challenging behavior. As a parent, that's very hard <laughs> to just not give in. Instead, think of it as a redirect, right? So for us, I take a deep breath. <laughs> I try to get my learner to also take a deep breath. <laughs> and in those few seconds, I model that calm, right? <sighs> and I try and run quickly through, okay, what's going on here? Oh, they don't like this task. They don't want to do this task. Okay. I have checked before. They have the skill set. They don't need additional supports to be able to do this. So we're on the right level. If I recognize that, ooh, this is a lot harder than I thought, I thought my learner was gonna get this, then I'm like, okay, I need to set them up for success. I'll redirect with some more supports, right? I will help set them up for success there. If I'm like, okay, everything's good. This is just maybe a, a I don't want to, to I don't want to do this task as opposed to I can't do this task. Then in that case, I want to try to help my learner get to a position where they can use those appropriate behaviors. So for my kid, sometimes that means I'm modeling taking a deep breath so that they remember to use that strategy. Sometimes that works. Sometimes for my learner, I say, okay, go take a break. Because I can see that my learner is already up here and we're not going to learn anything. We're not going to move past it when they're up here. And for my learner, going to a separate room allows them the time and the environment to reset themselves so that they can come out and they can then be receptive to my redirect, okay? For other learners, that may look different. They may not go somewhere else. And that is something, obviously, that we've been doing for years. So that is something that works well for my learner. They may not be able to leave and go somewhere else to calm down. It might be up to you to step away and allow them the space to calm down or to just pause. Nobody moves but we just pause in our instruction and then we return back to what we're doing. Um, and then at that point, you can provide a, a redirect of, you know, you can ask for more help or you can say, I don't understand, or you can ask me to show you how to do that. Um, those might be the appropriate behaviors in that situation. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of examples of how this might look a little bit different. Um, for my learner, I know that that works. For other learners that I have worked with, maybe the break does not work well. And especially if the learner is just trying to avoid the task, then taking a break may not be helpful. It may be teaching the learner that I engage in this problem behavior and then I get my break. And we don't want to teach that because that just creates a cycle where they continue to engage in the problem behavior. So if you think that that is what's going on in your environment, then this is where you want to uphold the demand, but maybe back yourself personally 
out of that situation. And this is why I love visual schedules, because if that's the case, I can sit there and I can just point to what we need to do, or I can set the worksheet in front of them, or I can, you know, hold the book and just be ready and I can wait. Okay. And then that would be the thing. If we don't, if the reset type thing walk off doesn't work, then just that like pause, but still holding that demand visually present without talking about it, without saying they've got to do it, but just visually it's there. That can be a way to help your learner understand that throwing the fit is not going to get them out of the task. The task is still going to be there but you're gonna wait for them to be in a place where they can learn because our learners can't get anything out of it if they're way elevated and escalated. So for our discipline, we really don't have a whole lot of consequences or anything like that. We don't take things away. We don't um, you know, remove points or tokens or anything like that. We don't um, ground, we don't do any of those things. We really do you know, this reset and redirect. I try and figure out what the problem is. And then I help my learner to be successful in using the skills that I want them to use when they encounter those situations in the future. Thanks for watching.